archaeological experts reveal some incredible finds. A Bible thought to be a thousand years old. A mysterious 5,000-year-old book has been unearthed in Egypt, shaking the foundations of history with its alarming revelation about our past. The ancient text, connected to the enigmatic biblical figure Enoch, hints at a dark and forgotten truth about human existence. Enoch, known for the extraordinary feat of avoiding death and his close ties with the divine, is at the heart of this chilling discovery. Join us on an holy journey through time as we unlock the mysteries hidden within these newly discovered ancient pages. Ancient Warnings Enoch's Hidden Truths Let's talk about a really big find. Recently, people found some pieces of an old biblical scroll and some other old things in caves in the desert. This happened in Egypt. A team of scientists surprised everyone when they said they had found a really old book, about 5,000 years old that has stories about someone from the Bible. They also found some old religious writings that seem to be from a very scary time long ago. What's even more shocking is the scary warning these writings have and what this could mean for us today. Come along as we take a journey back in time and look into this important message. There's a person from the Bible called Enoch who is very interesting but not much is known about him. He is famous for doing something almost nobody else could do. He didn't die like everyone else. People have been guessing about what happened to him for years because there's no detailed story about his amazing escape from death. His story in the Bible is very short and strange. It really just says that he was a good person who served God without asking for anything back. And then, in a special moment, God took him away without letting him die in the usual way. Up until now, it seemed like that was all there was to his story. Just a good man who was taken by God as a reward. In the Bible, you can find Enoch in the first part, called the Old Testament, in the book of Genesis 5.18. There are a few other people with similar names like Hanok, Henoch, and Hanno, but he's the only one mentioned in this way. He was a lot of generations away from Adam, born to his dad Jared when Jared was 162 years old. Enoch had a son named Methuselah, who is famous for being the oldest person in the Bible. He lived until he was 365 years old. Enoch had many other children too. Then, it says that God took him away. The mystery of what happened to Enoch makes his story even more fascinating. It makes us think about the parts of his life we don't know about. Like many other people in the Bible, Enoch's name tells us about who he was, his family background, and what he did while he was alive. Even though he is only mentioned in three verses, his story is as important as other big names in the Old Testament like Noah, Abraham, and Moses. This makes us wonder and want to learn more about him. Like the way he followed God's teachings, Enoch's name is thought to mean dedicated or trained. Unlike other people who spoke for God, Enoch's name was more than just a label. It suggested a meaningful journey that he was on as part of the big story in the Bible. He did more than just follow God. He had a special friendship with him, a kind of relationship that set him apart from others. The few lines in the Bible about Enoch hint at his deep commitment and make us want to learn more about his special bond with God. People have talked and wondered a lot about Enoch's life. He came into the world at a time when there was a lot of wrongdoing, hate, and badness. Many people think God took him away to be with him forever because Enoch was completely devoted. But people can't agree on how long Enoch actually lived. There's a big mystery around his life because, even though people see him as someone extraordinary, there's not much detailed information about what he did or how he lived every day. Out of his children, only one is named, specifically along with the mention of other sons and daughters, leaving much about Enoch's personal life in shadows. There's hardly any information on what his daily life was like, other than his total dedication to God, and even those details are left unsaid. The Bible sums up Enoch's time on earth as 365 years. 
He didn't die in the usual sense, but exactly how he left this world isn't explained. Some believe that Enoch was taken directly from Earth to be with God, which would mean he was treated in a very special way. According to what was found in the old book from Egypt, there is a scary truth about life that Enoch revealed. In this book of Enoch, it appears his journey to heaven wasn't just a one-time event. He went up several times. In one part, it's written that before he went up to heaven, he gathered people together and taught them how to follow God's ways with loyalty, gentleness, honesty, and hope. It's said that more than 2,000 people saw Enoch ascend to heaven in his lifetime. Enoch was both feared and deeply respected as a reflection of God's splendor and was seen as God's favorite at the time. This was different from the distant way Hebrews usually related to God, especially since other groups had gods they could see and touch. Among the few who wanted a deeper connection with God, Enoch was the most committed. In his story about the Great Flood, Enoch and his brothers built an altar to pray and offer sacrifices to God. It's mentioned that during one of these sacrifices, Enoch went up and made an offering right before the Lord. After he did this, the altar trembled, and suddenly, a knife appeared in Enoch's hand. This part of his story adds to the mystery and shows just how special his relationship with God was compared to others of his time. Next, we explore deeper into the mystery of Enoch and what his story means to us today, searching for goodness amidst the terrifying flood. This tradition of worshiping and receiving visions from God continued with Enoch's son, Methuselah, and was also practiced by all the prophets in the Old Testament. After Methuselah was taken up, his son had a frightening dream about a big flood that God would send. After Methuselah died, his son's wife, Sapim, became pregnant, even though she was very old. This caused a lot of trouble with her husband, and she nearly lost her life right in front of him. But the miracle baby inside her survived. This baby was found alive and well, dressed and grown, in the hidden burial spot where they had placed Sapim. When Nia and Methuselah's other children found this baby, they noticed he looked extraordinary and seemed like a sign that God was giving their family a new start, especially in their roles as leaders and priests. They named the baby Melchizedek. After spending 40 days with his earthly family, the angel Michael, following God's command, took Melchizedek up to heaven. At that time, God called Melchizedek his own son and wanted him in heaven. His dad, Nia, was so heartbroken over losing his son that he died without having any more children who could be prophets. Nia's passing sparked a vision in Methuselah about the destructive flood that was to come. There was no one left to lead the people toward righteousness, and so the task of building an ark to save them became urgent. After deeply analyzing Enoch's life, scholars and religious leaders seem to have made an exciting breakthrough. The old book, found in Egypt and over 5,000 years old, may reveal more than first thought. It talks about a terrifying truth concerning the human race, something that was seen in a vision and written down thousands of years ago. Enoch wasn't just a figure in religious stories. He was one of the very first prophets before the Great Flood, and he contributed significantly to human history beyond just spiritual aspects. Enoch is credited with creating the first written language, turning spoken words into written symbols, which started the whole process of documenting human experiences and knowledge. Many ancient texts that haven't been deciphered yet are believed to date back to Enoch's time. It's highly possible that he or someone from his lineage was the one who wrote these documents. A lot of researchers agree that Enoch wrote several significant texts known as pseudepigraphic midrashim, such as Hayot Rabati Sef Alot, Sef Hanok, and Hey Hanok. These texts are thought to make up parts of what is called the Book of Enoch, divided into four sections. This work has had a profound impact on how we understand history and spirituality. When this ancient book, dated back 5,000 years, was first discovered, it caught the attention of many with its shocking message about what it means to be human. 
Initially, no one understood its significance until scholars started studying its content in depth. They began to think that this old book might have something important to tell us about the future. A common belief among many Christians is that Elijah was the only one who escaped death, and that Jesus suffered, died, and was resurrected to save us from our wrongdoings. However, the story of Enoch is unique because, according to these ancient texts, he never faced death either and was taken up by God, showing a kind of divine favor that has been acknowledged throughout history. The Book of Enoch, as studied by scholars, is divided into five distinct parts. The Book of Watchers, the Book of Parables of Enoch, the Book of Luminaries, the Book of Dreams, and the Epistles of Enoch. These segments have been translated and discussed by various theologians and early church leaders. There's been a big debate over whether this book should be included in the Bible and whether believers should study it. In translating these texts, differences were found from mainstream Christian beliefs and practices. Although the book claims inspiration from the Holy Spirit, some argue that it shouldn't be studied further, dismissing it as not aligned with traditional teachings. There's a fear that its rich imagery and symbolism could lead to misinterpretation, causing confusion among believers regarding their faith and the principles they follow. Despite these concerns, Ethiopia has played a significant role in preserving this religious text, particularly by highlighting what has been discovered within its pages. The Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church, situated on one of the country's many hills, is a structure created from carved stones, featuring doors, windows, stairs, and walls, inscribed with passages from these texts. This church boasts over 45 million members, marking it as one of the largest of its kind globally. Ethiopia has also dedicated efforts to honor its cultural heritage, making many sites accessible to visitors. The Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church is renowned for housing many ancient spiritual manuscripts and books unavailable elsewhere. Efforts have been made to translate some of these into English, aiming to compile a complete Ethiopian Orthodox Bible. The Book of Enoch, along with the Book of Jubilees, has gained wider recognition, especially after being discovered among the Dead Sea Scrolls. These works were forgotten for centuries, banned by early church authorities in the second century. It wasn't until 1773 when James Bruce brought manuscripts of the Book of Enoch back from Ethiopia, shedding light on how the beliefs and practices of Second Temple Judaism significantly influenced early Christianity and how these beliefs evolved over time. Let's go further back in time to uncover hidden truths that could shake our understanding of the past, cracking the secret code of ancient secrets. In 1821, a man named Richard Lawrence began the task of translating ancient writings. These old texts were parts of a larger collection discovered by a person named Bruce. They included broken pieces written in Greek and parts from early Christian writings. These were grouped into different sections, such as the Book of the Watchers, the Book of Dreams, the Astronomical Book, and the Epistle of Enoch, which are collectively referred to as the happy times of a character named Enoch. Some of these old writings were also looked at and sorted out as studies of human cultures known as the Parables of Enoch or simply the Book of Parables. The finding of these old texts caused a big stir among scholars and religious people in Europe. A translated version from Ethiopia came out in the year 1906, put together by someone named R. H. Charles. This version is now seen as the most complete and correct translation of the Book of Enoch. This book is not just a simple translation. It also includes a detailed introduction to Enoch's life, explanations, and why the book is important. R. H. Charles organized the book into different parts for easier understanding. These parts include an introduction, information about the last day, a section called the Book of Courses of Heavenly Luminaries, stories about the history of the children of Israel, and the 10 time periods, by doing this, Charles made it easier to understand different themes, such as the study of the universe, religious beliefs, and ancient history. Since this book was first published, there have been many different versions released. 
These include versions that are rewritten in modern language, made simpler, or expanded with explanations. This book is considered a very important religious text from the time of the Second Temple, a long time ago. There's a suggestion that if this book were more commonly included in the Protestant Bible, it would fit in the section known as the Old Testament Apocrypha, between the Old and New sections of the Bible. A scholar named Joseph Haley mentioned that the original language of the Book of Enoch was Aramaic. Charles noted that the texts were written in a mix of Hebrew and Aramaic languages. Following the stories passed down through many generations after Enoch, the Jewish people of Ethiopia believe they are descended from Enoch. This belief ties back to a story when King Solomon, who was a great-great-great-grandchild of Enoch, was visited by the rich queen Sheba, as mentioned in the Old Testament. She came because she had heard of the famous lineage and brought with her incredible gifts for the young king. The queen from Arabia praised the god worshipped by Solomon and his family, even though she had never met Solomon or his father before. Her gifts to Solomon were more generous than any other king received during his time, showing her respect and acknowledgement of his noble lineage and the divine favor they believed to be part of their family's heritage. Many researchers have tried to figure out the exact language spoken by Jewish people when Enoch was around. Over time, languages change and evolve, making it hard to know for sure what language was used back then. It is believed that they might have spoken early forms of Hebrew or Aramaic. Some also think that Greek might help in understanding some of the translations. According to Richard Beckham, if we know the writings were from the time the Second Temple was being built, people who know a lot about Judaism could help track down the language's origins. In addition to finding texts about Enoch in Egypt, parts of these writings in Greek were found in Qumran Cave 4. These texts were written in the old version of Aramaic, considered sacred and symbolic by some. However, until 1947, when the original texts were discovered at the Dead Sea, these fragments weren't seen as very important or informative. These texts, known as the ASAS, include information about the religious and cultural lives of people, how Christianity and ancient Judaism developed, and more. Before these discoveries, people thought the ancient book, forgotten by kings and over 5,000 years old, wouldn't offer any useful insights. They believed it might reveal troubling truths about human life and uncover lost knowledge. However, R.H. Charles, who published the book, highlighted its value in providing a better understanding of each part. In the first part, known as the Book of the Watchers, Enoch talks about the blessings he received, the divine vision shown to him, and his understanding of the universe, stars, sun, seasons, and every part of the earth. He also describes strange creatures resulting from the union between fallen angels and women on earth, and what happened after these events. In the second part, Enoch describes three moral stories shown to him. The third part mainly deals with stars and the universe. The fourth part covers his two dream visions warning of disasters, which were predicted to happen 52 years apart. The last part contains letters where Enoch shares his visions with his family and urges them to repent. There's a special section for his son Methuselah, advising him on how to live a life that follows God's ways. Now we enter the world of ancient secrets and hidden truths that Enoch's book reveals to us. Enoch's extraordinary map to the stars and beyond. Enoch talks about different types of angels in the seventh chapter of his book. He describes some as good angels who stayed loyal to God and others as bad angels or watchers who started causing trouble and leading people to do wrong things on earth. He says these bad angels stopped following God and chose to follow their leader, known as Satan, instead. The story also talks about angels who were locked up because they did bad things, showing respect to Enoch. It also describes how Enoch was taken on a tour of the heavens by very powerful angels. In an earlier part, chapter 6, which has some similarities with the first book of the Bible, Genesis, Enoch describes how these rebellious angels became attracted to human women, married them, and had children with them. 
This led to the birth of unusual offspring, like giants and very strong children, referred to as Nephilim. Besides, these fallen angels taught people harmful knowledge like magic and evil rituals. One particular term used in Aramaic, which refers to these fallen beings, links them to demonic creatures that look like evil goats. This idea is somewhat similar to a Jewish tradition about a scapegoat. In this tradition, a goat is loaded with the people's sins and then sent away to fall off a mountain on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. This act represents God's forgiveness for the people's sins and their own acts of saying sorry for their wrongs. The term Son of Man is another interesting part of Enoch's writings. In the New Testament, Jesus Christ uses this term a lot, which people often think refers to Jesus showing he is human. But in the book of Enoch, the term has a different use. Enoch used Son of Man long before Jesus, suggesting there is a deeper meaning behind it rooted in Aramaic, Hebrew, and ancient religious texts. In Enoch's context, son of man usually means all humans in general, but it can also point to a specific group of people who see themselves in a certain way. In the Hebrew Bible, the term son of man is used a lot by the prophet Ezekiel. He uses this term when God speaks to him. This means that he, Ezekiel, is just like other people, he was born from a woman and has all the usual human qualities and feelings, different from angels or heavenly beings. This idea is also connected to Jesus Christ in the New Testament. Jesus described himself as a real human being who could feel pain and would even face death. The idea here also has a big important meaning. Jesus is seen as a holy figure sent by God who is supposed to complete an important mission to save all believers. In another part of the Bible, called the Book of Enoch, Enoch shares his experiences of being taken to different heavens. In the second heaven, he finds a place much darker than earth, filled with sorrow. Here there are angelic beings who are suffering a lot. These angels are guarded and are waiting for God's decision on their punishment. They are very sad and in a lot of pain. Enoch finds out these are the fallen angels, who chose to follow their leader and go against God. They have been caught and put in chains with other rebels in a different heaven. The story tells us that these disobedient angels, known as the Bad Watchers, are facing endless suffering as punishment. Then, Enoch tells us about his journey through the skies, which he calls the Heavenly Circle or Celestial Orbit. This path looks a lot like the paths we see planets follow in our solar system. In his vision, the highest part of the sky is called Kronos, which is like our Saturn. Below that is Aphrodite, similar to Venus, and then Ares, like Mars. Further down, the fifth level is Zeus, our Jupiter, followed by Hermes, Mercury, and the last, seventh level, is closest to where our moon travels. Enoch's description helps us imagine a map of the heavens, where each level is named after a different planet similar to names used in Greek mythology. In the second book of Enoch, he talks about the planets as if they are big, bright lights moving around in a circle in the sky, which he calls the heavenly circle. This space in the sky is special because it is divided into three different kinds of areas or dimensions. There's a special term he uses, soa, to talk about these dimensions. The first kind is like the actual physical world we can see and touch, with places, shapes, and sizes we can measure. This is called the perceived space. Then there's the second kind, which is a bit trickier to understand because it's all in our minds. This is called the conceived space. It's not something we can touch or see. It's more about ideas and how we think about space. And the third kind is a special place that affects all the other spaces. This one is really important because it's connected to history, people, and societies. Enoch went on journeys through all these spaces and shared what he learned, talking about how God connects everything in the sky and on earth. He shared old secrets that make us think differently about life, death, and what comes after we die. Now let's talk about an old Egyptian text, the Book of the Dead. It mentions something called the Book of Two Ways. 
This book is all about the journey a person's spirit takes after they die, hoping to find peace. It describes how the spirit can go through the underworld, which is like a scary, challenging place, by either land or water. But it's not easy. The spirit has to face and beat many scary things like demons, fires, soldiers, and gatekeepers who are there to protect the entrance to the underworld, ruled by Horus, the god of the dead. According to this book, if the spirit manages to get past all these obstacles and faces the god of the dead successfully, it can live forever. This means that the spirit becomes immortal. This story from the Egyptian Book of the Dead is meant to guide people's spirits on their journey after death, showing them how to navigate this dangerous underworld to reach eternal life. Join us on a journey as we uncover the lasting impact of ancient knowledge on our search for meaning. The woman in the coffin shares terrifying old secrets. In 2012, a significant find took place. A book, believed to be around 4,000 years old, was unearthed by Harco Williams. He was doing archaeological work at an old burial ground used by kings and officials from Egypt's Middle Kingdom era, around 2055 to 1650 BCE. This site was on a cliff close to De'el Bashar and served as the final resting place for many important people from that time. The book was discovered inside the coffin of a woman named Ankh. Interestingly, Parts of this book were also linked to a king named Pharaoh Motep Thiu, dating back to 2010 BCE. This means that some pieces of the book are even older than others, having been found earlier in different archaeological digs. This adds layers to the history and importance of the find. Another amazing discovery happened in Egypt, but this time in Cairo, at a place called Saqqara's Giza El Muda. Here, Archaeologists found a tomb that was astonishingly 43,000 years old. This tomb provides new insights into how ancient Egyptians lived and buried their dead. During the excavation, archaeologists found 12 carved statues buried 27 feet underground in a burial shaft. One of these statues even had a nearly complete mummy, a rare find, as not many intact mummies have been discovered. The most notable person buried at this site was Qum Jedf. He was an important official, the inspector of officials and supervisor of nobles, and served as a priest in the Pyramid of Unas. Another significant tomb was that of Mary, who was known as the Keeper of Secrets and an assistant to the king. The area had several unidentified burials, including those of two couples, showing the vast and varied history of those laid to rest there. The burial site is organized into different areas, one near the Teddy Pyramid, one near the Pyramid of Unas and a southern area, close to the famous Pyramids of Giza in the Saqqara Necropolis, another exciting discovery was made, the funerary Temple of Queen Nate. She was an ancient queen, both wife and daughter to King Teti, the first pharaoh of the sixth dynasty of Egypt, who died over 4,200 years ago. Her burial place next to King Teti's pyramids suggests her importance. The find was groundbreaking, as it revealed that King Teti had more than two wives, unveiling the existence of an unknown third queen. Initially, the identity of the body found in the temple was a mystery until researchers looked into old texts and uncovered information about her from the history of Egypt's Old Kingdom. The archaeologists also discovered 22 burial shafts containing more than 54 colorful coffins, around two dozen mummies, small servant statues known as ushabtis, pots, small figures, and numerous wooden boats complete with carved sailors. These items, believed to be about 3,000 years old, give a glimpse into the funeral practices and beliefs of ancient Egyptians. Among the significant findings in Queen Nate's tomb was a 13-foot-long scroll, thought to be part of the Book of the Dead. This included the discovery of Chapter 17 from the Book of the Dead, adding a profound piece to the puzzle of ancient Egyptian burial rituals and beliefs. The writing was on ancient symbols known as hieroglyphics. It talked about a person's spirit journeying to a wonderful place called Paradise after they died. On the stone grave, 
It was mentioned that the person who owned this old writing was named P.F. People who study old things, called archaeologists, found four small statues with the same name at this place. They also found wooden boxes, which were coffins, around the stone grave. After looking into it more, they learned that these boxes and statues were meant to help Queen Nate in a life after this one. People from long ago in Egypt knew more about beings from other planets than we know today. They think that some of their big and special buildings were made with the help of these smart beings from space. The clearest story of seeing these beings was written down a long time ago, around 1440 years before Christ, by people who wrote for the Pharaoh Thutmose III. They wrote it in a book called the Tulip Papyrus. In the year 1933, a big boss of the Egyptian Vatican Museum named Alberto Tulip found this important writing that had been lost for a long time. This old writing, when turned into hieroglyphics and then read, tells a story about bright flying objects in the sky over Lower Egypt. These objects looked like big, shining disks without heads. They were as long and wide as a road and didn't make any sound, but they smelled bad. It was said these strange objects went towards the pharaoh's palace, but nobody knew what they were until they checked old scrolls. After a few days, there were more of these bright objects, and in the evening, they went higher into the sky and towards the sun. This mysterious story, written in ancient symbols, reveals a strange event with these silent, bright disks in the skies of Lower Egypt. On the other hand, the story of Enoch gives us happy and hopeful messages about what comes after this life for those who live their lives for God. Enoch, during his time, was a spokesperson for God to people on earth and didn't go through usual human problems like suffering and death. He was among the first to see where God lives and to talk with angels and see what would happen in the future. Enoch's spirit was different. He didn't have to search for the afterlife like most people. He was more like a bright light showing the way to endless knowledge, which he then shared with everyone else. His writings changed the thoughts of many prophets and followers of Christ who came after him. What his book shows to people today has made many think again about how they follow God. What does this new book show us about Enoch's secrets and where humans come from? Is it a big historical discovery or just a mix-up? Share your thoughts and don't forget to like and subscribe for more explorations into our history's mysteries.